Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Stewart, the manager of the Canton Branch of the Haywood County Public Library System. I recently interviewed Zondra Kirkendall, our recycling coordinator in Haywood County, for more information on what we can and cannot recycle here in our county. Hope you enjoy. My name is Zondra Kirkendall. I am the recycling coordinator for Haywood County and today we are going to talk about Recycling 101. These are the items that you can and cannot put in your single stream recycling either at curbside or at the convenience center, whichever one you happen to use. So we're going to start with what we want in our recycling bins. Things have changed. It got harder to recycle things that we want to recycle. So we have to had to simplify. So we have a list and it's called Recycle Right North Carolina. And all of our material goes to curbside management in Asheville. And this is the items that he wants. We're gonna start with the ABCs. We're gonna start with aluminum, which we have aluminum cans of all different shapes and sizes. We have bottles of all different shapes and sizes. We've got round bottles, we've got kind of square bottles. We've got jugs. Our jugs come in different sizes, shapes. We've got small jugs, we've got larger jugs. Then we're gonna move on to our papers and cardboard. Paper is extremely recyclable, extremely important to recycle those. There's all different kinds. There's paperboard, which is your normal toilet and paper towel holder, your drink containers from when you go out to eat for your cups, magazines, your boxes that your cereals come in, and of course your newspapers and envelopes. Pizza boxes have always been controversial because the grease factor. They want clean cardboard, so for example, this box here is perfectly clean, perfectly recyclable. So in our recycling stream, there are a lot of products that say they're recyclable. They've got a number on them. They've got the chasing arrows. Unfortunately, with the changes in our economy and the inability for us to ship all of our recyclables overseas like we used to do in the past, a lot of items have become non-recyclable in our MRF shed. Our MRF shed is where our materials go to be sorted and processed. Included in all these materials, we have number one, single-use cups. They don't sort well, in the lids especially, um, because they actually get sorted to the paper with the new technologies with optical sorters. All of that becomes a contaminant. Um, ceramic, it it looks like glass, it works like glass, but it is not recyclable with our glass. Styrofoams, plastics, your chip bags. We love our chips, I do too. But unfortunately, our processor can't take those materials. Yogurt cups, the baby food, plastic containers, and any other formed plastic is not recyclable due to the way that the materials are sorted and processed. Black plastic, it's got a one on it, love the number one, but it's not recyclable in our MRF shed. The metal lids that come off the jars um, become a contaminant to the glass, so we ask you to please remove those metal lids, and if you want to put them in your um, large metal recycling that goes to the specifically to the metal bin, you're more than welcome to do that, otherwise those would need to go in the garbage. And these container, and I'm gonna, highlight this one is actually considered a tub and it's a good container but our problem is is that it's got food in it and the more food residue the harder time they have in recycling that material single-use coffee cups they're paper but our processor cannot handle those aerosol cans become an issue because they if they have a material in them um, they become a fire hazard for our MRF, so please leave those out. And our berry and clamshells, they have, let's see what they've got, they've got a number one on it, but our process, they're too, they're too fragile for our processing equipment, so please leave those out. Tanglers, definitely an issue for machinery. 
If you can put them in your electronics recycling, definitely do that. Do not put them in your single stream container. And please, please, please do not throw in your recycling something like this. Um, just because the, the machines can't sort it, plus there are several things in here that are not recyclable. This sort of plastic. This is a great material, but because it was tied in, it can't be sorted. These materials, the rings for your sodas, definitely are not recyclable. Plus you want to cut all of the rings out to make sure that they don't get tangled up in wildlife if they do happen to get loose any other way. And this right here is perfectly recyclable except for it has liquid in it, which is not recyclable. Um, so please, when you're sorting your recycling, make sure that they're kept separate and don't contaminate your good recycling with things that are not recycled. Thank you, Zondra. That's been very informative, and I have a few questions for you. I noticed that there's a plastic container in the yes to recycle materials and then the no to recycle materials. Can you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. So on our yes side, we have a yogurt, or a, this is actually a sour cream container, and this is considered a yes. It's a tub. Um, the only difference is you want to take the lid off because the lid um, with our technology would sort to paper because it's flat. So we would make that a no, but the tub, and that includes your butter tubs, would be a yes. Um, on this side, the no's we have are yogurt containers, and it's all about the size and the material it's made of. This one's a little bit more rigid. Um, the optical sorter would not be able to tell what this is. Um, so that is why it gets a, a no from our processor. Okay, thank you. And what about the Keurig cups? Um, the Keurig cups, our processor does not want them. Um, they are too small. Um, the size of that container sorts to his glass um, because it's a two inch by two inch um, screen for the glass. So those curry cups would actually sort to glass. Plus it has a contaminant in it um, being the coffee grounds and then the, the lid that's on it. Um, so that would be a no for our processor. Alrighty, and also if I understand correctly, um, something that is typically a yes to recycle, if it has food or um, water, some kind of liquid substance, whatever, still inside it, that makes it a no. That makes it a no. That is correct. Um, liquids, they say, are not as big of an issue, but food contamination is definitely an issue. You don't want to leave anything inside your cleaners or inside your containers. Um, as you can see on this side over here, I've got a mayonnaise jar, I've got a spaghetti sauce jar. All of those, quick rinse, dump them out, good to go. Even if it's just a little bit that you can't get out, it's not a problem. But if you have a half of a container of um, sour cream or half a jar of mayonnaise or half a bottle of ketchup, they don't want that. That becomes a problem with um, vector control um, because it brings in the bugs, it brings in rats, um, and it just becomes an issue with our processor. Zandra, what are the things you have here in the middle between the do's and the don'ts? Okay, so there are many, many packages that are recyclable, but the way they are packaged, they have non-recyclable materials included. Um, we have a lot of shipping materials that come out, so you'll get your box, you'll get your peanuts. We want this box, absolutely want this box. These peanuts, they need to be bagged up and thrown away, or you can take them to your local um, shipping uh, store, and they will actually reuse those peanuts for you. Uh, cereal boxes, we all love our cereal. Please take the bag out. That paperboard is perfectly good. That bag becomes a don't. Um, one of my newest acquisitions, we got a box from Dunkin' Donut with a really good coffee in it. That box is absolutely recyclable, but it just takes two seconds to pull that bag out, put it in your trash. And then we have here um, 
where a lot of our pens, markers, everything comes in a paperboard backed plastic fronted container. This, how it is at this moment, would be a no. But if you were to separate this plastic from this paper, they would go paper yes, plastic no. Sandra, at our office we have a shredder. So what about this shredded paper? Can we recycle or put that in the recycling bin? Shredded paper is not recyclable. Um, many factors. One, the pieces of the paper fiber, once you shred them, they're too small for the processor to reuse that fiber. Um, two, they become a fire hazard because they are so small when they get into a processing facility, it sends up that dust, those bits of paper, and they, they become a fire hazard for the facility. So that is a definite no on the, the paper. Uh, shredded paper due to those two factors. Well, that leads to another question. Uh, what about bagging your recyclables, whether it's going into the curbside or at the convenience center? Okay. Bags are our main contaminant for our processor. There is no way for them to pull bags out of everything. It tangles up their equipment, so that leads to downtime with them being able to process. So we ask you if you have a container, Maggie Valley, Canton and Clyde all have recycling containers that look like this that are curbside. We ask that all your materials go into those containers loose, just how you see them here. Um, everything loose, everything that's on the table can go in that bin together. You don't have to worry about separating them. Your cardboard, your paper, your jars, your bottles, and your jugs. They can all go in your bin loose. The same for the convenience center. Because that material goes to the same processor, the fewer bags we have in there, the cleaner our material is, um, the, the more efficient our processor will be with recycling those materials. What about rigid, hard plastics? Can, they, can something like that's made of hard plastic be recycled? Um, due to changes in the regulations, um, again, we are no longer able to ship our rigid plastics to uh, overseas for processing. These have been removed from our recycling stream. Um, love reusable cups, but once it's broken, that needs to go in your trash. Anything that is this type of rigid material, laundry baskets, your kiddie pools, anything like that, that's too large for our processor to handle. So all of those become trash. Chairs, lawn chairs, all of that type of material, I've seen it go in the bin. It doesn't belong there. Processor can't handle that type of material. So Zandra, what about hardback and paperback books? Can books be recycled? Books in small quantity can be recycled. Paperbacks, easy peasy, put it with your paper. Hardbacks, they can accept those books, not in pallet quantity, but if you have a book or two, they can absolutely be recycled. Um, if you can, remove the hardback if it's more than just a paperboard book. Um, otherwise, absolutely, you can recycle. Right. Zandra, one thing we haven't talked about yet is batteries. How do we recycle batteries? Okay. Haywood County, actually, uh, besides our single strand, we do offer recycling on what we call hard to recycle materials. Um, that includes our batteries, fluorescent light bulbs, large metal items, cardboard in bulk, and mercury containing products, which is anything that contains mercury besides a fluorescent bulb. At our convenience centers, our uh, site attendants have collection areas for batteries and for compact fluorescent bulbs, which are the small curly cube bulbs. And the best way to package a battery is you want to put a piece of tape on each end to keep them from hitting each other when they go in that collection container because if they tap, they can become a fire hazard. So we ask that you take each end and drop it in the collection box. If you have multiple batteries, you can put them in a baggie. Um, just again, as you can see, this battery 
did not get taped and they have touched and so the acid has actually released from those. And we ask that we not get them in this fashion just because that acid becomes a hazard. The lithium batteries and rechargeable batteries, you can either repackage it back in the package that it came in or just put a piece of tape around it so that both sides are protected from touching another battery if it happens to be put in there loose. The fluorescent curly cues, there's also a bucket that you can put those in. Larger fluorescent tubes and the other mercury containing devices would need to be taken to the materials recovery facility in Clyde where they have a collection area for those materials. Clyde also has a metal collection bin, uh, scrap tire collection area, and a cardboard area if you have a large amount of cardboard that will not go in your single string. So how do we recycle paint? Okay, paint is a very fun material. There are actually two different rules. One is called household hazardous waste. So any material that is oil-based or hazardous chemical would need to be held until a household hazardous waste event is held. Um, and we do advertise those events on our website or in the local newspapers. Now, water-based paint can be disposed of with your household trash if you mix either kitty litter, sawdust, sand, something in the paint to harden the material so it is no longer liquid, put the lid back on, you can put that in your trash. Unfortunately, with the oil-based paints, that doesn't work. So that is why you have to hold those until we have a household hazardous waste event. And then another question would be about what to do with used motor oil, antifreeze, anything related to those products. Okay, so we do have um, collection containers at all 10 convenience centers for used motor oil and filters. Um, this is for residential use only, um, no commercial businesses, but they can uh, take that material and pour it up in that container. There is a container for the filters. Jones Cove Convenience Center has a collection container for antifreeze. Again, residents only, no commercial use. Unfortunately, gasoline, um, we've gotten a lot of questions about gasoline. We do not have a way in Hayward County to dispose of that. Um, thank you, Zandra. Our, uh, that was fabulous residents. information. Like and thank you all for watching. If you have more questions or need more information, so, please go to the HaywoodCountyNC.gov website. Motor oil and or if you have general questions, you can check out a book from the Haywood County Public Library. Thank you.